anymore. Hello, and welcome to the Alliance for Democracy's The Pipeless Dialogues. My name is David Delk. I host this series of half hour weekly cable access programs produced here at the studios at Portland Community Media. Today, our guest is Jerry Paulette. Actually, uh, we're going to be showing a recording of an interview which our Alliance for Democracy member Nancy Mattella recorded. Jerry is the executive director of Heart of America Northwest, and we're talking about plans for the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. So we'll go to the video first, and then at the end, we'll bring Nancy uh, to the screen. The Energy Department seems bent on continuing to move forward with using Hanford as a national radioactive waste dump and to insist on not cleaning up the wastes that are in the ground, just <laughs> covering it up. Well, we call a cover up, not a clean up. They, they are intent, even with leaky high level nuclear waste tanks where the leaks have happened and the contamination is moving down through the soil column to the groundwater, they don't want to dig it up, they just want to cover it with dirt and it'll still keep moving. There are 178 high-level nuclear waste tanks at Hanford, and these tanks are, many of them are the size of a four-story apartment building, a block, covering an entire block. Each one. Each one. And there are uh, 54 to 56 million gallons of liquid and sludge high-level nuclear waste in those tanks, some of the most deadly waste ever produced on the planet. And over a million gallons of those wastes have already leaked from the older single shell tanks and is spreading through the soil to the groundwater. Most people have heard of high level nuclear waste and spent fuel. The Energy Department, its plan was to bury this stuff at Yucca Mountain, Nevada. And then the Obama administration wisely said, that'll never work, it'll never contain the waste, it's seismically active, and it'll contaminate the groundwater there. So the Energy Department had to withdraw this plan to send spent fuel and high-level nuclear waste there. Now there's no place for this waste to go. This is the waste that the President appointed a Blue Ribbon Commission to try to figure out where should it go. They didn't recommend a specific site. They said, here's some criteria. Our criteria would be, don't put it next to a Columbia River or any other place where anyone will ever be exposed to the groundwater that it will contaminate. That leaves very few places where it can go. Now, there's lots of other nuclear waste, however. Lots, far more, of these other types of nuclear waste. And the Energy Department has a plan for those wastes. And that plan is sending it to Hanford. So they have two major proposals out and impact statements that they're going to be finalizing this year. But we haven't seen the final impact statements. But we know the Energy Department proposes to send very radioactive waste to Hanford. And this waste is often mixed with chemicals. And that makes it particularly dangerous because we don't know what the chemicals are. Some of them are flammable. Some of them are explosive. In fact, when the ch many chemical wastes are exposed to high levels of radio radiation, what happens is that the chemical breaks down and forms explosive hydrogen gas. So when you've got this in containers, you've got a real problem with safety. And the Energy Department wants to send thousands of shipments of this stuff to Hanford, going through Oregon. And we'll talk about this, but we're talking about so hot that people will die from exposure along the trucking route, even if there are no accidents and there's no terrorist attack on it. Then the Energy Department wants to ship what it will call low level waste to Hanford, but some of this is actually as hot as some of that. There's nothing low level about it at all. It's misnamed. It's really 
some of it very radioactive. A lot of this is also mixed with chemical wastes. And the Energy Department proposes to bury this stuff at Hanford, now in lined landfills. But that liner will not last more than 30 or 50 years. And the waste will contaminate the groundwater over and over and over again. Then there's other low-level wastes. And if it's from a commercial reactor, then it gets buried in unlined ditches operated by the state of Washington at Hanford. Yes, I said unlined. In this day and age, they still operate unlined ditches, even though that radioactive waste landfill is leaking all sorts of radioactive and chemical contaminants out of the unlined ditches already. So we have a threat of numerous types of radioactive waste coming to Hanford, even though these are not the waste that people have heard about most in the news, um, which is the spent fuel and high-level nuclear waste that has no home. Most of the waste would come through Oregon, through up I-5 or I-84 on the, its way to Hanford, and 10 to 20 percent would go through downtown Spokane on I-90. So the state of Washington is making a decision that will possibly mean up to 80,000, less 20 percent, of the trucks coming through Oregon. Uh, the, the Energy Department has lowered the number of trucks they propose to send, fortunately, but it's still not only now the low-level radioactive waste, but they're also proposing separately to send what's called greater than class C waste, which is a fancy word for waste that is so radioactive that no one can stand near it. And when we talk about the truckloads of waste, estimate now is 20,000, maybe 30,000 truckloads of waste. Um, we're talking about several truckloads a day, every day, for decades. The state of Washington has authority under our federal and state hazardous waste law to issue a permit for hazardous wastes at Hanford. And under the, those laws, that permit should say, you cannot add any more waste to a site when the existing wastes on the site are not in compliance, they're already contaminating the groundwater in the Columbia River. And they're not cleaned up. They're not cleaned up, and they're not going to be. And the Energy Department's own impact statement, which many people went to a hearing about a year ago, that per impact statement said, under the Energy Department's plans, even if you don't add any more waste, Hanford's contamination will continue to recontaminate the groundwater above drinking water standards at levels that will cause many cancers over and over and over again over 10,000 years. As we're sitting here, there is strontium-90, there is chromium entering, and uranium entering the Columbia River, and some of it is at levels that are well over a thousand times the drinking water standard. What that means for the layperson is this. Thank you. If the drinking water standard is set at a level at which one adult for every 10,000 who drink the water will die of cancer from the contamination. So if we say a thousand people, a thousand times over the drinking water standard, we are saying that if you were to drink the water entering the Columbia River today, right where it seeps out from Hanford for 50 miles, the river runs right through Hanford, where it seeps out, if you were to drink that water, 10% of the adults who drank it would die of cancer. Well, our children are three to 10 times more susceptible to get cancer and die of cancer than an adult is. So we can all do the math here. We're talking about a fatal risk of cancer from the contaminants flowing in if you were to drink that water at 30 to 100%. Now, fortunately, no one's drinking that water today. But it gets diluted in the Columbia River, and there's no removing a particle of cesium, strontium, or uranium from the water. It's just diluted. And we have children playing in that water 
and we think that the right solution eventually is to glassify those wastes, remove it from the tanks, and vitrify it. But for the last 12 years, the Energy Department has been bent on building this multi-billion dollar facility without having done the design and testing the design to see if it'll work. And for 12 years, we've been saying there are serious safety problems that you've never answered. There are chemical engineering problems that you've never answered, and that the piping will break down, the pumps will break down, and the radioactivity is so intense that um, there's no replacing that. But worse than a breakdown is the fact that if the pipes accumulate plutonium or the tanks in the vitrification plant accumulate too much plutonium at one time, the whole thing begins a nuclear chain reaction and goes boom. Um, hmm. Similar to a meltdown, essentially, okay. at a reactor. Um, or a hydrogen gas explosion occurs. And their own safety overseer has blown the whistle and said, they're not listening to me. Let's see, um, we're spending about $2 billion a year on the cleanup of Hanford right now. Okay. Um, during the last two years, we had stimulus money, so we spent right. an extra billion a year. Um, so we're talking um, probably uh, well over $30 billion, 30 billion. already okay. spent on the cleanup of Hanford. And we have some good progress to show for it, but we don't mm -hmm. have thirty billion dollars worth of progress because right. of the way the contractors milk this system, et cetera, and because of things like building a plant when you don't have the designs for it and having to go back and redo it, mm -hmm. um, we probably have, you know, ten billion dollars worth of progress. work to show okay. for thirty billion dollars worth of spending. This hearing is our chance to get the state of Washington to use its hazardous waste permit authority to say no, no to using any more, uh, no to using Hanford as a national radioactive waste dump for hazardous chemical wastes, um, no to using Hanford for the extremely radioactive hazardous wastes that they want to bury at Hanford, no to just covering up 40 miles of unlined ditches with dirt instead of finding out what's in them and why they're contaminating the groundwater. No to leaving the residues of the high-level nuclear waste tanks and the leaks in the ground to contaminate the Columbia River over and over again for 10,000 years. States have the right to regulate the Energy Department's hazardous wastes. Mm, okay. And all the wastes at Hanford, almost all of them, are mixed hazardous and radioactive. So the Energy Department, when they say we're going to bring in this extremely radioactive waste, they admit they don't know what's in it because it's so hot they can't figure it out. Mm. And it's likely to include hazardous wastes. Therefore, the state of Washington says, should be saying, you don't get to bring that in, you don't have a permit. And our permit is going to say, we hope, you do not add any more waste to Hanford when the existing wastes are out of compliance and the groundwater is being contaminated and the river is at risk and people's health is at risk. The problem is, while the state of Washington ought to be a lot more easy to influence than the Federal Energy Department, they need to hear hundreds of voices telling them to use this authority. The governor of Washington, Chris Gregoire, promised to use this authority eight years ago to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. The permit has been dragging on for eight years, and we're finally having, having hearings on it. And on the draft, the things that were promised to be in here are not in here. But we can change that with a big public outcry. Who's we? Are Portlanders you, included? Me, yes. Okay. Um, the state of Washington has recognized that the people of Portland just like across the river in Vancouver, have as much a stake in protecting the river as anyone else, and they've agreed to hold the hearing in, on the Portland side of the river so that it's easier for most of the affected people to come to. And so it's very important for people to take advantage of that and to show up.
it's important that we get people to these hearings and for them to speak up and say, I want the state to use its authority. And for the, tell the governor of Washington, you promised us, you promised us that this permit would say, clean up before you add any more waste. That's the governor's public position. Why doesn't her ecology department's permit clearly like that. say that? Well, this permit as being put out for public review right now doesn't even come close to meeting the minimum legal requirements under federal law for a hazardous waste permit. It is the most, it is the single largest permit given for a hazardous waste site in the history of the United States. For starters, every permit of this kind is supposed to have an environmental impact statement. This one doesn't. Washington State has failed to meet its most basic obligation, which is to ensure that you and I get to see what are the impacts of the proposal on the environment. For instance, if we allow X amount of waste to be dumped into the literally unmonitored um, landfill that's operated today without a permit, um, what's the impact of that? And how do we reduce that? That's supposed to be an environmental impact statement. Are it, they assuming that the DOE's uh, impact statements they, uh, are standing in for they, what they need they to do? They are assuming that the only problem is that we've never seen the final environmental impact statement right. from the Energy Department. So we can't see what the impacts are and it's like being asked to comment on what's in the black box. Um, you know that the black box may explode in your hands. Would you like to know what the risk is or not? Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. We don't know because there's no impact statement. The state of Washington's professional staff, we know, has repeatedly said that the conditions in this permit do not meet minimum standards for a permit. And yet, the State Department of Ecology is continuing to negotiate it with the Energy Department, and it's a crazy system. The Energy Department actually writes the permit, sends it over to Ecology, Ecology reviews it, they send back drafts saying that's not okay, and they go back and forth. Um, we have asked to see some of those drafts over the years, and we're entitled to, under our State Public Records Act and the Federal Freedom of Information Act, mm -hmm. and Instead, what we got back were blacked out pages. Yeah. Why? So we had to go to court and have a court say you can't black out the pages for a permit application. We wanted to see what the proposed permit conditions were going to be for those 40 miles of unlined ditches at Hanford. We know there's hazardous waste strewn throughout them. What is the state going to do? You're entitled to it. It's your record. Mm -hmm. State of Washington was asked by the Energy Department to keep things blacked out. They blacked them out. We sued. They had to settle and admit under state law they shouldn't have blacked it out. We took a look at the documents that mm -hmm. were then no longer blacked out. And there was a reason they were blacked out, I would say, because it was embarrassing that the state of Washington was going along with the Energy Department's proposals to essentially say, we're not going to do anything about these 40 miles of unlined ditches that are going to not only contaminate the groundwater, but in 50 years or 100 years, if we don't clean these things up, someone is going to dig a utility line trench or something through these ditches, and they're going to be spreading God knows what contamination. Mm -hmm. It's a love canal waiting to happen over and over again. The irony here is that Congress appropriates that money mm -hmm. and Congress has shown over and over again that it will appropriate the money for Hanford cleanup as long as Congress knows that there is a regulatory requirement that it's being met. Mm. And Congress has said specifically Tell us if we're going to meet the regulatory requirements because we want to increase the funding to do so. So if you don't put the permit condition in, you don't get the money. If you do put the permit condition in, you get the money. That's what makes this very ironic. The federal government had wanted to put that spent nuclear fuel, the commercial 
fuel rods mm -hmm. in Yucca Mountain, Nevada, originally. Mm -hmm. And so um, Hanford is not where they want to put the high-level nuclear waste, the spent fuel rods. Hanford is where the Energy Department wants to put the waste from weapons production and the dismantling of reactors, the innards of nuclear reactors, and the weapons production wastes that are extremely radioactive, hotter than high-level nuclear waste, actually, um, from dismantling pieces of a reactor. Um, from commercial. Right? I'm worried today, for instance, that um, the Energy Department is going to say, as radioactive wastes wash up from Fukushima on our shores, they're going to say, well, let's bury it at Hanford. Heart of America Northwest commissioned uh, independent nuclear physicists to take the Energy Department's data, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's model, and say, what would happen if you took one truckload of this and had a reasonably foreseeable fire uh, from an accident or a reasonably foreseeable terrorist attack on that one truck at the intersection of I-205 and 84 in Portland. Okay. The answer is 300 square miles of Portland would have to be evacuated and could never be, re un you know, it would be uninhabitable. Uninhabitable, okay. You're talking about a thousand cancer deaths from that one truckload shipment. Um, moving these wastes is like basically saying to a terrorist, why bother trying to steal plutonium when the U.S. government will put it on the road, send it through major downtown city um, and for you, and, uh, right. um, and that's, if there are no accidents, it's like an invitation for a terrorist attack. Right. We need to clean it up, not right. cover it up. We need to clean it up before any other waste is talked about right. to be brought in. And that's the final big principle that the permit should cover. Okay. want to make sure that our children and our Next generation is protected from Hanford being a national radioactive waste dump. If people don't want their families exposed to thousands of radioactive waste trucks coming through Oregon, then they need to be at that hearing on May 16th at the Jansen Beach Red Lion. Um, this is the opportunity to tell the state of Washington that it has to say no to the Energy Department, which is already said it plans to formally name Hanford as a national radioactive waste dump for almost all the different types of radioactive waste except for the fuel rods that come out of reactors. Everything else they are saying they'll plan to send to Hanford. But we have the state authority to say no. In Washington. In Washington state. And the courts have said the state has the authority. The governor of Washington promised eight years ago to use that authority in Hanford's hazardous waste permit to say no to adding any more waste to Hanford when we can't clean up and we can't protect the Columbia River and the groundwater from what's already contaminating it. So we've been watching Jerry Paulette. Jerry is the executive director of Heart of America Northwest in Seattle, which has been for the past 30 years the a uh, major advocate for cleaning the Hanford Nuclear Reservation up in the Tri-Cities area. And so we want to uh, introduce now Nancy Mattella. Uh, Nancy Mattella is the Hanford Project Chair for the Alliance for Democracy. So welcome to the show, Nancy. Thanks, David. Good. Uh, so tell us, why, why, why have you been activated on this particular issue? Well, I've actually been active um, more than 20 years because the tri-party agreement between us, um, the state of Washington and the U.S. Department of Energy uh, over 20 years ago had an agreement that they were going to clean up the place and not take on any more waste, mm -hmm. um, radioactive waste. And uh, I lived in Vancouver at the time and was quite concerned. So I've been keeping watch of it and attending hearings over 20 years. Well, wow, that, that's that's quite right. Yeah. So it, it it appears that Oregon and Washington are becoming a, a third world state nation, um, in, in that we're having to accept uh, the export of LNG, the export of coal, and now the import and storage of nuclear waste, perhaps for the nation. 
response to that? Absolutely. It's just dawned on me and a number of us in the Alliance for Democracy that we are kind of a way station for people, corporations making profit um, uh, coming through our state. If you uh, just look at Oregon alone, we've got coal, excuse me, coal coming <laughs> through. We have uh, the natural gas coming through, both of those being exported. And what do we get from it? We get their environmental waste and um, the health hazards. And then there is uh, Hanford, and if um, this uh, waste uh, permit doesn't um, call it out directly, the DOE could start um, transporting uh, radioactive waste through our cities uh, along I-5 and with that radiant uh, energy um, killing people. And then number four, um, oftentimes forgotten, is one of the reasons that the bridge over I-5, excuse me, over the Columbia River on I-5 is being expanded is because we're considered the bottleneck from Mexico to Canada. Natural resources going one way, finished products going the other way. So they just want to go zooming right through us, uh -huh. uh, as a, and we're a way station. So yeah, right. um, and right. it's so so we 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 have we potentially have the environmental and you know, actual costs of the LNG, the coal terminals, the nuclear waste going to Hanford, uh, and then this exorbitant amount of money which is. Um, being dedicated to developing this bridge, which is not really for local use. That's right. And that's, that's right. all on the back of us. All that Oregonian. environmental pollution, um, the stirring up of the Columbia River to drive the pylons, all of that will be local messes, not taken on right. by the people who benefit economically. Right. Okay. Yeah. So tell us what can Oregonians do? There's two things. One is May 16th, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock at the Red Lion um, Jansen Beach Hotel. There will be a Department of Ecology from the state of Washington giving a hearing and we will have a chance to say, no, we do not want waste coming through. We want the waste permit to prohibit waste being delivered to Hanford um, uh, only after it's totally cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Who is? Uh, right to Christine Gregoire, who's the governor of Washington. She can direct the Department of Ecology to make the waste permit, the hazardous waste permit, say, clean up before any more waste comes to Hanford. Okay. So. Excellent. Thank you very much for being here, Nancy. Great. Thank you, okay. David. Great. Great. Well, that concludes our program for today. So the mission of the Alliance for Democracy is to end corporate domination, establish true democracy, and create a just society based on a sustainable, equitable economy. Thank you to our crew. Our crew today is Roger Bates, Dave King, Janet Morris, Joan Horton, and Tom Thomas. Thanks to you, to the audience, for watching, and we hope that you'll we hope that we'll see you again next week. Bye.